Uh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So Olympic athlete, wellness coach, yoga teacher, author, uh, motivational speaker, TEDx speaker, um, mentor. Is there anything else? I missed anything else off that list? <laughs> yeah, new father. So if I start stumbling over my words, as you know, uh, Ziggy uh, is nearly five months old now. Uh, so yeah, if you can see the bags under my eyes, then that's uh, reason for uh, for that. So uh, yeah, a new father, which is the most challenging uh, um, uh, challenge that I've taken on so far, if I'm honest, but very rewarding, as you as you rightly know. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, so with that long list of kind of uh, things you've done professionally and personally, there is so much that we can talk about. Um, but just for the for this conversation in particular, mm -hmm. I think it's really important. I'd really like to focus down on with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, with the UK again going into its second lockdown, it'd be really nice just to kind of get your view and get your expertise on kind of how we can manage our own health and well-being in this extraordinary time. Mm -hmm. um, so how are you doing, first of all, in lockdown and how, is, how has this impacted your life? Yeah, so uh, the original lockdown was a huge um, disruption um, on all levels. In fact, it was, I, I would liken it to going through grief. So there was a, a different stages of grief, which I can't recall precisely, but uh, first of all, you know, I found myself uh, either very angry and then I wouldn't accept it. And I was really struggling. And then I went into a, a deep, deep state of sadness uh, where my mental health was really, really suffering. And there was a pivotal moment there where I really needed to, you know, make a decision or do something to get myself out of what was a very, very slippery slope. And that's when um, I realized that all of the things I was relying on, all of the events that I was due to speak at, I was meant to travel to the Olympic Games in Tokyo to commentate. There was all these things were just completely taken out. And I was suddenly found with um, the inability to contribute to the, that I was doing before. I was able to take my coaching and mentoring online, but I wasn't so familiar with the likes of Zoom and such like. So that's where um, I had to make some very decisions and, and come back to the point that what has happened is completely out of my control, but what I chose to do would change everything. And that's when I really started to focus on how I can serve others, you know, through my passion. So movement and mindset. And that's where I started to create certain offerings online. I've been running mindset and movement classes, which is a combination of all the things that are important to me for to support people with their mental and physical health during this very extended period all the way from March. And of course, now we're in lockdown too. There's more people stuck at home, more people feeling, you know, emotionally challenged because of course here in the UK, we're into winter, it's darker. You know, there's a lot more um, challenge going into this second lockdown. Christmas is just around the corner. People are losing their jobs. You know, it's very, very tough, very, very challenging, but there's always something that we can do and we always have a choice. Um, and that's kind of how I've been dealing with it. And those are the, uh, the things that I've been sharing with those I'm able to uh, contact through the classes that I'm running, through the mental or the coaching that I'm able to do on this virtual platform, because you know, we need to look after ourselves and we also need to look out for each other. And that's been the big thing for me through lockdown is, is, is making sure that we can look out for each other and support each other in, in the best way we can. And that's where my passion and the, um, my influence can, uh, can hopefully make a, a continued difference. Right. So let's go back a little bit, um, or let's go back a lot into uh, Leon Taylor as a, as a child mm -hmm. and how you kind of like got into, um, becoming an Olympian and, mm -hmm. and I know that started from a kind of like how you were as a kid and your mm -hmm. temperament do you want to talk a little bit about that sure yeah so um I was a pain in the backside as soon as I was born for some reason I wouldn't sleep so my poor parents I was first born uh did their very best they were sleeping in shifts I needed uh constant attention wouldn't sleep and that kind of carried on and um you know as I got a little bit older um you know my parents didn't really know what to do with me so it got to a crunch point where they took me to the family doctor to see if there's anything that he could do to support and um he gave them a couple of choices one of which that was to take me away to a children's hospital and sedate me so my mum and dad could get to rest I mean this is late 70s of course or alternatively there was other pharmaceutical interventions and my fortunately my mum and dad decided that uh, that wasn't the route they wanted to go down and they decided well uh, if we want to get some rest we're going to have to make sure that we can tire Leon out and so uh, physical movement uh, as soon as I could crawl I was crawling up the cushions and my dad would push me off and we do it again and we do it for hours 
I was in the bath, I was swimming as soon as I was old enough to be allowed in the pool. So I was in nappies, swimming all the time. I went to mother and baby gymnastics and it was very clear that movement was my medicine. And that was the start into this world of physical activity and ultimately different sports. I tried all different sports when I was young. And by the time I was eight, uh, I just diving was just another sport that I had chance to uh, to try and because I'd been doing gymnastics since the age of like six months and swimming from probably the, the same age as this perfect combination. And it, it quickly became the sport that I loved the most. And then I was able to follow my dreams of going to to the Olympic Games and um, yeah, eventually standing on the podium, which was uh, a 20 year journey, um, you know, right from the age of six when I first saw the Olympic Games on the TV and then finally uh, my third Olympic Games standing on the podium uh, winning a silver medal in 2004. So yeah that was quite an adventure uh, and I've still got the uh, energy about me now that I had when I was younger but I've got it a little bit more under control uh, for various things but yeah that's uh, that's how I ended up uh, throwing myself off a high diving board for a living for many many years. Oh, that's crazy. It's crazy. This is what I love about you, because I feel like uh, Olympians have this kind of superhero quality about them. You know, this, this kind of us and them th uh, thing. And you kind of look at them and we literally put them on pedestals like they're just they're just amazing. And what I love about you um, is that you're very real and you're very honest. And uh, especially now you've transitioned from this kind of Olympic athlete and you're using your platform to talk about mental health and well-being and taking care of ourselves um, it's really helping to bridge that gap and you know you're really showing this side of you that's kind of like hey I'm human and I go through all these things as well um, and so that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to get you on and talk today because um, you know like I said in the opening to this conversation there's people sitting at home now and they're really stuck in a rut they're literally locked in their their own homes and they're struggling so I really wanted to pick your brain really and kind of like go down this road of how for someone watching this right now and everything's really bleak and um, what would be your advice what would you what would be the first thing you would tell them to do to kind of get out of this state yeah okay well uh, I always start with with the thing that we can do to a certain degree and that's move and so physical movement changes everything. You mentioned my TEDx talk. I'm not going to go into the full details in this conversation because I'd love to invite people to watch it. It's 18 minutes long and it's how to manage your mental health. And, and within that uh, 18 minute um, presentation uh, that I uh, stood on the set, I think it's been watched by over a million people now, which I'm, I'm very proud of. But my, yeah. the, what I was able to ascertain from all of the research and my experience is that physical movement changes everything for us, our experience of the world. Physical movement changes our state. And I'm I'm not talking about going to the gym because they're shut i'm not talking about going for a run because running's hard and not everyone enjoys running i'm talking about physical movement physical movement this is a physical movement if we just did this do this with me now lisa just sitting here like this changing our shape of our body in such a small way creates expansion into our body it naturally deepens our breath that means it increases our oxygen uptake we're changing our neurochemicals now whether we want to or not just holding my body in this position sends energy through my body i'm increasing uh, levels of um, uh, hormone testosterone in in the body i'm reducing uh, cortisol in the body and just for a minute or so i actually feel feel completely different or is certainly shifting in a way from uh, apathy, stress, overwhelm towards something more of a feeling of wellness. And if I do that often enough, I disrupt this buildup of stress, of anxiety, of worry, which is completely normal. We're in a situation where it's very uncertain and there's so much out of our control. But we can always do something that is within our control and physical movement. And of course, some people have disabilities and injuries and I mentor Paralympic athletes and such like, so I'm very familiar with, with some people don't have uh, the ability to move as freely as others. And I get that, but we always have an option and it's just even changing the rate of our breathing. Um, as you know, as you are a yoga teacher and I know how important the breath is. And I've been teaching and sharing people different breathing techniques, which changes our neurology, changes our state and makes the world seem a slightly brighter place. And when the world seems slightly brighter, we can make further decisions which promote our wellness. And you know, we can start talking about what we consume from a nutrition point of view, but what we consume from a mental point of view. How much are you on social media? Where are you 
looking? Who yeah. are you talking to? What are you consuming through your eyes and ears as well as from a nutritional point of view? How are you eating? Are you in quarantine snacking mode? Are you just constantly up to the cupboards? I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? Because we got bored and we got things like that. But these are choices that we do have control over. I can't control that the government here in the UK have said, you can't go to work, you can't do this, you can't do that. There's things that I can't control. I can disagree with it. I can get angry about it. I can do all those things, but I can't control it. What I can control is whether I'm talking to you now and I decide to stretch or I'm deepening my breath. There are certain things that I always have a choice over. And I think that's very freeing when we realise that, that we often get in patterns of overthinking about things that we can't control. And the easiest way to get out of our heads and into our bodies is to physically move because that brings us into this present moment here and it completely changes our neurology. Right, so you're talking about even the smallest movement. You're not talking about like exercising, you know, because it's such a broad word, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. I'm, I think that there's multi layers, right? So there's a lot to be gained from moving physically. There's a lot to be gained from going outside, which is tougher now if you're here in the UK as I am. It's dark a lot, the weather isn't particularly good, but you need to get outside for lux, L-U-X. You need to feel you know, the, the, the temperature on your skin. There's so many th things. So just put a jacket on, get outside. I often joke that um, become a smoker, but without smoking. So if you're at your desk all day, right, and you're working, go outside and pretend to have a cigarette and then come back in. What have you done? Well, you've probably walked 10, 20 meters. You might've even gone down some stairs. You have stood outside and you've, <gasps> you've taken a few deep breaths you've got some sunlight or some daylight on your actual skin and then you've come back in and you've disrupted the build-up of who I am on my laptop if that is what you do working from home as many many people are uh, so there's lots you can do obviously physical exercise transforms your physical well-being and your mental well-being physical movement changes the shape of the hippocampus hippocampus is a control center of everything so it increases your cognitive endurance it supports your mental well-being your mental health there's so many uh, studies out there now which is supporting how powerful movement is so movement and exercise so movement is anything right massively important do that all the time the more that you can bring little movements in, you know, if it's just standing up, sitting down, the more you disrupt the buildup of stress, whether that's psychological or physical stress, whatever you're experiencing. And exercise and more vigorous movements, great if you've got the ability to do that and you find movements that you can do in these circumstances and that you enjoy doing. So whether that's joining an online class so you can move collectively with other people, which is massively important, whether it's going onto YouTube and finding some ideas through some uh, exercise uh, routines that you can find on there. Sometimes it's nice to share the experience with others, which is why platforms like this lend themselves really well to that. Or just going out for a walk with your rain jacket on, with or without a dog, uh, whatever it is, and just taking a moment to move physically, which can you know, get the heart rate up and get the blood pumping around the body and you'll get massive physical, mental and emotional benefits from all of that. But be consistent is the, is the main thing. So if you just go, right, well, I'm just going to do exercise on a Saturday, then I would challenge you and go, well, do a bit every day. So that hour that you're going to spend on a Saturday, just do four minutes a day. Go yeah. for a four minute walk, do some squats, you know, do a push up. Uh, there's lots of things that you can do, but make sure that you are consistent and that, you know, the success isn't what you do occasionally, it's what you do consistently. And when you're looking at implying success to wellness, it's about being consistent and, and making it fun. Any tips on how to make that consistent? Mm. Um, and, you know, is it an accountability thing? Is it kind of a, because we have to remove these mental blocks, don't we? Especially if we're not used to, we're not into a habit of regularly moving. So how do we move that little mental block that's in the way of actually standing up and getting into movement? Yeah, definitely. So, so schedule it and make it so easy that you can't fail. Uh, so when I work with clients and they come with, you know, a very real, haven't got time because I'm busy with list of things you're busy with. They say they've got a minute. Mm. say yeah I can do a minute so, okay so first thing in the morning once you've you know been to the bathroom that's what you need to do then use that one minute to physically move my suggestion is you know 10 squats 10 sit-ups and then 10 push-ups on your knees okay and you do that every day for two weeks okay and all you're doing there is proving to yourself with small wins that you're someone who moves and of course what happens that minute can turn into two can turn into three and then you're slowly starting to build the habit and then you're noticing the benefits. You know, I feel a bit better when I do that. When I don't wake up in the morning, first thing I do is this, 
and I go into the action mode, the first thing you do in the morning is the alarm goes off that hopefully isn't your phone and you stand up and you do a physical stretch and you do some very simple movements, whatever they are for you, for one minute, for two minutes. Maybe you think, well, actually, physical movement's a bit early for me, but I'm going to sit on my bed and I'm going to follow my breath for one minute. I'm going to start a day with a one minute breathing exercise, a one minute meditation, whatever you want to call it. Just start your day in that way. And then you won't even notice it within a few weeks. It will just be something you do, like brushing your teeth. And I suppose that's the other thing is stack it with 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 other habits so i often get clients to do their squats while they're brushing their teeth you're brushing your teeth you normally just stand there or whatever you're doing so why not you know do this as well it seems funny now and you're laughing and that's another thing right so make it fun like stand yeah. there with your partner if you share the house with children partners whatever do it together make it fun right because why not you know, a day without laughter is a day wasted, as Charlie Chaplin says. So let's, you know, let's make it's a good quote, isn't it? Let's make it make it more fun. So that's the thing. People always try and do too much too soon. They go, right, I'm gonna exercise for an hour in the morning. I'm gonna get up at 5 a.m. Well, okay, that's a big, you know, uh, huge statement to make. Yeah. And if you're not used to getting up at 5 a.m., then that's gonna bite. Okay, mm -hmm. but maybe you are, so you can create that space, but just make it so easy, it's impossible to fail. And then of course our confidence builds, our habit starts to get ingrained and then it just naturally starts to seep into what we do. Mm, I think that's the thing with New Year's resolutions as well. <laughs> There's such build of people put it off, put it off and in January, I'm gonna start this and then it's so huge. And the, and the weather's crap and we've just overeaten and overindulged. It's like probably the worst time to start a new regime, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just start where you are right now. Um, so the other thing, yeah, yeah, the other thing I wanted to touch on, because I know a lot of um, people who follow us have suffered with, with pain and, and chronic pain, they're probably suffering right now. And I know you have suffered with many an injury mm. in your career and your life. And so I'm quite I'm interested to know more about how, you've dealt with chronic pain in the past and how you've gotten out of chronic pain and how you've managed that on a, on a daily basis. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, during my 22 year career, I, uh, had four reconstructive shoulder surgeries on the same shoulder and the injury that finished my career was my lower back. I was in chronic pain for probably the last five years of my career between L5 and S1. And, and for those of you that are listening and watching that are in chronic pain it's um yeah it's difficult to describe and it was really difficult for me to get a handle on until it went away it was like the the, the noise was turned off and I felt a sense of relief because some days it was just like a dull ache and other days it was a really sharp acute pain that was really debilitating I couldn't move and uh, the journey for me to get out of that was ultimately stopping training six, seven hours a day, hitting the water, you know, at crazy speeds from a 10 meter diving board, squatting double my body weight and all this really harmful physical uh, activity. So I'm a big proponent of being physically active, but of course, pushing your body beyond its limits every day, which is what I was doing, isn't good for you uh, physically and mentally. So I came to the end of my career with this severe injury or severe injuries and I needed to make changes. And so my choices were, were guided by the, the medical team who were looking after me and they recommended that I stop doing everything I was doing very sensible because it was damaging my body and start doing something to try and rebalance my body. And that's when they suggested I explore yoga. And at that time, this was uh, 2008, yoga certainly wasn't as popular or as mainstream as it is now. And I screwed my nose up and I was like, oh, what's that? You know, I had these visions which were incorrect that it was just for uh, middle-aged women in a church hall somewhere, you know, um, uh, wearing purple and being all spiritual or something. And then, or maybe it was the Indi Indian origins that I had in my head. Anyway, long story short, I reached out, I was reaching out to my friends and uh, asking, like, can anyone give me a bit of direction on where I could start from a yoga point of view? And I was recommended I should try a style of yoga that's done in a heated room. Uh, and then uh, my friend Debbie, who's telling me about it, said it will kick your backside. And I was like, great, where do I go? Where do I sign up? And that's when I started my yoga journey. And it was um, transformational because um, I started practicing every day if I could. And within six months, I realized that I was physically no longer in pain. 
but also mentally and emotionally, I was feeling these effects that I had no idea were there to be accessed through this practice of movement and breath. I was feeling calmer, I was more patient, uh, and I was making this really uh, tough transition from elite athlete to life after sport with all this uncertainty. And I was taking it in my stride and it was this daily practice of yoga, which wasn't just the physical movement, which is what I thought it was. There's was these multi layers. And that's when I went off to study. I became a, um, a, a, a qualified as a yoga teacher and I've been teaching regularly for over uh, well over a decade now. And so that for me is, is part of it. And I still get bouts of uh, reoccurrence of lower back pain or shoulder injury, depending on what I'm doing. And the yoga practice is there always to, to support me on, on all of those different levels. But I'm also one for nutrition. Over the years, I've experimented widely with nutritional um, uh, nutritional strategies let's call them and not using the word diet but you know I've done everything from you know high fat to low fat to vegan to everything and I've really refined what works for me and I'm predominantly plant-based I do occasionally have fish but I'm also a big proponent on how I can supplement and as an athlete we were encouraged to stay away from supplements just in case they were contaminated or anything like that but now I've over the years of research okay so what is going to help my immunity what are the things that are going to support Support my brain function and I've researched and researched and, and the bottom line is I only take anything that is super high quality because there's a lot of rubbish out there and that's why you know I'm delighted to be part of the the, the, the truth um, you know a cohort because there's no better quality when it comes to curcumin and that's probably one of the best things uh, that I can find out there. I mean I used to waste my money on on turmeric before right thinking it was doing the right thing and I was trying to get good quality turmeric until I read all of the research and watched the videos from Dr Harry and I was like ah okay so this just you know makes perfect sense to me so that's part of my routine as is vitamin d and i do take an omega-3 as well to support me uh, from a particularly from a, a, a brain health point of view so someone who's had um uh, mental health challenges in the past had a bout of um, depression during my career but more importantly the the hyperactivity adhd there's a lot of research showing that you know omega-3 is incredibly important for that so i've uh, experimented and continue to to experiment with what works for me uh, from a nutrition point of view and from a supplementation point of view and I'm slowly in my early 40s getting it right and I feel as I've got more energy now and better digestion than I've ever had and who doesn't want more energy and better digestion that, that's the that's the thing right right exactly yeah I think it's really important to kind of really notice everybody is totally unique and individual and you know it's I, I'm a big advocate for you know tap into what you what works for you notice your digestion notice your energy levels and 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 work with that don't listen to anybody else or what they tell you you should be taking or what works for them as long as like you said it's high quality and it's uh um, you know, from the earth and not really too overly processed. I think you're on a good track if you if you go down that route. How's your, um, so you saying when you were an Olympic athlete, you were, did you have to follow a specific kind of diet when you were, when you were in training then? Yes. I mean, this, the, the thing uh, with nutrition is that it changes so quickly mm -hmm. and uh, it's so confusing. And so I was being guided by nutritionists, uh, performance nutritionists, who would guide me on do this, do that. And of course, you know, when I was competing, low fat was like really popular. So I was on low fat for a while, which caused lots of problems for me from a um, uh, in eating um, disordered eating point of view. So when you're not having fat, it kind of puts your body into this state of like missing a massive macronutrient, sends you into a very uh, unhelpful relationship with food. And so I've had to work through my own challenges from a psychological point of view. So it was um, alongside the challenge of diving in order to be uh, to increase your power to weight ratio, you would ideally be quite low in body fat. And also if there's not much of you, but you're really powerful, you can jump high, you can do all these spins, you can get through the water without making any splash. So that in itself means that you're pushing the body to maintain this low level of body fat all the time. And that mm -hmm. can itself become psychologically damaging, but also physically damaging because you're reducing the nutrition you probably need. So high performance sport is not good for you. Um, but, but being active and being mindful of your initiatives, and that's where 
I've learned the lessons the hard way, which is why now I, when I'm talking to people, working with people, I talk about building this foundation of wellness and then working on performance on top of that, because I spent all of my time just focusing, focusing on performance at the expense of my wellness, physically, mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, and, and that's not the right way of doing it. Um, so yeah, so I think that you can get suddenly distracted by what's the best diet and what are the athletes doing and what's this, but as you know, it's a minefield. I think, you know, the finding your way through it, um, and being open because like, if you hold, you've got to be, you've got to hold on to your beliefs strong, strongly enough. So they, you know, that the, they keep you aligned with what you're doing, but be flexible enough to go, Oh, actually I can change them because, uh, yeah. you know, as new things come about, you need to go, Oh, okay. Then, you know, meat isn't good for me. It makes me this, this, and this. Okay. So what would happen if I removed it? Oh, great. Whereas mm -hmm. I was told that oh, you need this cause it's complete this and blah, blah, blah for that. And I'm like, Oh, I believe that. Oh, actually, if I do this, oh, okay. So having that flexibility, um, because you know, if you can't change your mind, you can't change anything. Mm. We're can't mm. Sorry, there's a bit of a delay with our we're recording. There's a, we're constantly evolving, aren't we? Like that's I take from what you what you just said there. And if we're too stuck and we're too rigid, and this goes for everything with our belief system, with what we're eating, what we're doing on a daily basis, then we just keep ourselves super stuck, and we end up arguing as well with others. You know, that's the other thing that ha that's happening, especially, especially now on social media. It's like, no, this is the way. No, this is the way. It's, no, well, that's your way. Mm. This is my way. And let's just agree to, to disagree. <laughs> mm, definitely better that way sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is there anybody at the moment that you're that you're inspired by from a from a health perspective? Is there any kind of regime that you're doing now or something or someone that you're following? That's oh, I'm, I'm glad you asked me that question, because I was going to come back to the pain thing. And uh, and I was going to share with you a strategy that uh, that I've been getting stuck into. So I live here in the UK in Brighton and I'm looking out of my window because I can see the sea. And uh, I've been inspired by v Wim Hof and uh, so the aka the ice man and his uh, three pillar strategy which is around breath work uh, mindset and cold water oh. now uh, we all know that if you bash your shin you can go and get the peas out of the uh, freezer and put it on your shin takes down the swelling right if you go and get in cold water fully it has amazing effects on your body on your mind and on your overall wellness. And so that is something that I've been inspired by and I've been following. And I have been for the past two winters getting in the sea pretty much every day. The only reason I wouldn't get in is if I'm not here or if the waves are too ferocious. I get in with no wetsuit and I just spend up to five minutes in there. Then I come away and I get warmed up. And that for me has been the biggest um, boost to my mental wellness as well as my physical wellness over anything that I've done in in recent years you know I get frazzled like we all do I get stuck in overthinking like we all do and uh, when my to-do list is overwhelming I go and jump in the sea and I come back to it it's still the same to-do list but I'm more resourceful and that uh, is something that I'm very fortunate to, to, from a location point of view to do, but you can still do cold showers. You can still put your face in very, very cold water, which stimulates your vagus nerve, which obviously runs from your brain down into your, all of your organs. And uh, this is you know, ways that you can still get the benefits of cold exposure from a, um, a physical, mental, emotional point of view. So that's one thing that I wanted to share with, with you and the audience, uh, because they think, oh, well, I can't do that because I'm not by the sea, but there are ways that you can do it. And if you haven't looked into Wim Hof, I know that you're a fan as well, Lisa, um, look into it because it's, uh, there's a lot to be learned there and things that we can all do differently uh, in order to improve our, um, our state and our wellness. Yeah, it's fascinating. I do recommend looking him up. There's lots of YouTube kind of videos and stuff of him talking. Um, this is the other thing with Leon. If you kind of tell, you can tell he's a coach. If you tell him, oh, I can't do something because I don't have the sea there, he'll he'll find a way. <laughs> no, you can. <laughs> you can get under that shower. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll round, round, round things up now. It's been a good 40 minutes. Thank you for chatting with me. Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of direct people to, because I know this is something that you started inspired from lockdown, is your, your online classes. So if someone wants um, to kind of experience the full Leon Taylor, mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit actually about what that class entails? Yeah, I'd be delighted to. Yeah, so when I was... Um... 
uh, when I found myself stuck at home, that's probably the worst thing for someone like me who loves to travel, meet people, be in people's company uh, and uh, generally interact. And so one of the, uh, the things that came out of that kind of uh, challenge was to, OK, so, well, how can I share what I'm most passionate about online? And there's lots of offerings out there, but my uh, creation is called Mindset and Movement. It combines my two passions, mindset, coaching and movement. It's a 60 minute class and I've made it donation based. So people who are really struggling financially can attend and those who are in a little bit of better position, you can pay whatever you can afford. And it's open to all levels as well. That's the great thing. So I've combined this, uh, my two passions. So we start with a, a mindset exercise or technique, something to help us manage stress or uncertainty, something from my coaching background. And that's been amazing for me because I've been really diving into all of the content at them, pulling stuff together to share with my um, everyone who, who joins me week in, week out. I then use my I don't know, 30 plus years in sport, 10 plus years as a yoga teacher and a PT to design a movement uh, program, which it kind of builds up to something, you know, it's quite high intensity, but it's, it's accessible to all levels. So we warm up, we physically move, we get our neurology firing. And then we wind down together and I end with a guided relaxation is something that's most important for all of us that we rarely get a chance to do is rest and recover and rejuvenate. So this class is built in such a way that you get everything from it. I run the Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays publicly and they've been going all the way through lockdown. There's quite a tribe of the community there and it's the easiest way to find out a bit more about it is just to go to my website and you can see the link there. It gives you a little bit more of a description and uh, I've been very fortunate to be offering this all over the world for different companies because companies are thinking, well, how can we look after our employees from a physical and mental point of view? Uh, and I'm able to deliver this as well. But I've kept the public classes going because the community and the connection is what makes it worthwhile for me, that sense of purpose. And so I know you've uh, joined me, Lisa, many times. So uh, if anyone's um, interested, come and come and play because it's... Uh, yeah, it's a fun way to spend uh, to spend an hour together, connecting to other people and working on our health, happiness and performance. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. I've, yeah, I've done it um, quite a few times. It's super easy. You're just clicking a Zoom link and then you're in there. You're like Leon said, it's donation based. So whatever you can afford and you do get a little bit of everything and you get that accountability as well. You can do YouTube videos and stuff, but when you've got Leon there and you've got a group of people together, it's actually quite nice. And it's nice to have that accountability every week too. So I'll, I'll put the link as well underneath Thanks. the video and stuff so people can see. Um, and then the name of the TEDx talk was it? Uh, yeah. So if you just put my name into into the TEDx YouTube channel, it'll come up. But it's how to manage your mental health uh, is the mm -hmm. is the title. So yeah, please check that out as well and share the link as well because uh, yeah, we need to look out for each other and it, you know sharing uh, resources uh, such as my TEDx it is much more helpful than sending a link to uh, the latest argument on social media or the uh, scaremongering that's going on about you know, X, Y, and Z that's out there. So let's, uh, let's take responsibility for what we're sharing as well. And maybe that's a nice thing to share with someone to, to shift them in the right direction towards increased wellness. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Leon, for chatting with us. Hopefully we'll, we might be able to get you on again soon if, if people have any more requests or want to hear from you more. I'm delighted. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, thanks for your time. Bye.